Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Lawmiles Australia. Today we're going to talk about the Works Landroid um, and basically boundary wire issues uh, that cause or the no wire error, no wire or no signal error that you'll actually get on your Landroid or on the app. So you can see on my machine right now we've got the dreaded E1 signal. Okay, so on a WR139 like this one, um, you'll get the E1 error. On a WR140, 149 and 150, you'll actually get the screen that will tell you that you've got wire missing. Okay, And also on your app, it'll say wire missing. Now, that is nearly always caused through, obviously, the, the boundary wire not emitting a strong enough signal for the robot to actually pick it up. And that can be caused by a few things. Obviously, the power could be off. So if the power's off, then you'll actually have no light on your base station. So we'll go over here and show the base station. So in this particular case, We've got a nice solid green light, okay, which indicates that hey, the manual says that the uh, that the wire is okay. If, it, if the light if the light's green, then it's not my boundary wire. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. So if you do have a solid light, then and your robot's still doing an E1 error, it still means that there is most likely something wrong with your boundary wire. Um, there's generally nothing wrong with the robot. Most likely, 99% of cases, it's always going to be the boundary wire. If you've got a red light, well then clearly it's the boundary wire, it's got a, it's got a broken wire. Um, and if you've got no light, it's probably your power supply um, possibly could have failed, or maybe you just don't have power turned on to the, to the actual unit. So check your power point with something else, with a, with a drill or a lamp or something, just to make sure the power point's working. Um, and then plug the uh, power supply back in and see if you get any light on the base station. If you get no light on the base station, then there's something wrong with either the base station or the power supply. But in any case, in this particular case, what we're looking at today and what I want to focus on mostly is when you have a solid green light on the base station, but you still get the E1 error, okay? So the reason for this is resistance in the boundary wire, okay? This particular set, um, setup I've got set up today, um, I have obviously just run a very temporary wire on my surface here, and I have a very big variable resistor here plugged in uh, of the wire here, and it's currently set at around about a thousand ohms, okay? So we're going to test that in a second and show you exactly uh, how to do so. But at around 1,000 ohms, and when you put the robot in the middle of the, middle of the yard, uh, if you clear the error by pressing the start button, so if you don't know that with uh, works Landroids, to clear the error, you press the start button and it goes back to idle. Okay, and then if we try and start it, well, it's just gone back to E1 straight away. Or if we go there and we press that and we press start, it tries to start, doesn't do anything, okay? Now, what can be possible, uh, it should be in this particular case at about a thousand ohms resistance, is that if I take this this robot and put it closer to the boundary wire, it'll most likely do something different. So let's try that. Okay, so we've now put the wire, so the boundary wire is just here beside it. We're coming here, we've now got an E6 error, but if I press the start button now and just let it clear, it sits in idle, and lo and behold, it stays in idle, okay? So it looks like it's, everything's okay. So we'll press the start button, press OK, and beeps and away it goes. And then what happens is something a little bit weird, is that the robot won't be able to go very far from the boundary wire. As soon as, it's as, soon as it turns away from the boundary wire, I guess I'll cut my wire there because it is on a very temporary. As soon as it tries to move away from the boundary wire, it'll end up and basically just turning itself back towards the wire. So you'll find that the, the robot just won't leave the wire, it just keeps mowing very, very close to the wire. So let's just hit this, let's just stop there for a second. Restarts, it's having a bit, bit of trouble there, so we'll protect those wires here. Back, let's see if it wants to get out of there. It really is just, it really is just struggling to do anything. It doesn't really know what to do. Just keeps stopping and starting. So this, sort of behaviour is also showing that there's something wrong with the boundary wire. It could obviously also be something else, but in this particular case, if you've got a robot that's, uh, that's not turning properly, then it, it, can be, uh, it can be the motors and gearboxes and things that, that could cause it. But in this particular case, the erratic behaviour of the robot is simply because the, uh, the boundary wire resistance is too high. So it's still just not leaving the boundary wire, it just wants to stay very close to the boundary wire all the time. away from the boundary wire. As soon as it leaves away from it, it's going to turn back and try and go back to the boundary wire again. Okay? So that sort of behaviour is also caused from the boundary wire. Now, if we again carry this back a bit so we can put it back a bit further on the boundary wire. This time, what I'll do 
is again we're, we're next to the boundary wire I'm going to reset the error and then I'm going to send it home so home and OK and just show you what it does if it's trying to actually go home so it will follow the wire but it will be probably quite shaky let's have a look see what it does so, now it's come up with an E1 error straight away with a bit with a slightly lower resistance so let's go try again it's going to do all these very weird things yeah, yeah okay it's going to try okay good all right yeah, yeah all right, maybe not if it did try and follow the wire what it will do is it'll actually follow the wire it'll be very very wonky and wavy as it goes along so like i said resistance in the wire causes all sorts of issues okay but mostly just comes up with an e1 error like such okay so we go back to the base station over here and i'll just show you with a multimeter exactly what i'm talking about here so got our little nafoya uh, nf uh, 5320a multimeter very simple multimeter you can buy these on the website as well so you can have a look i'm going to set that to ohms okay so you set that to the ohm scale it's going to sit there at zero zero ohms i'm going to disconnect the wires out of the base station so obviously the white light will go red when it does this and i'm going to connect one wire bear with me for a second people one wire to the left side and one wire to the right side of the boundary wire okay so i've got so i've got the uh, the black probe of the multimeter to going onto the wire that's going off to the right hand side and i've got the left wire the red red uh, probe of the multimeter onto the left wire going off the left way and we've got 1.03 k ohms so 1000 just over 1000 ohms okay reading on the multimeter so that's what's causing the issue now what i'd like to do is i'd like to go back to the to the uh and to the resistors i have here and we're going to turn this resistor back to about halfway which is about there we are. so it's about there somewhere no? a little bit further about there so that should be somewhere around that that now is set to around about halfway which should measure something like about 500 ohms there we go, yeah, so it's measuring it's measuring 557 ohms now, okay? So I'm gonna put those wires back in the in the base station, so bear with me for a sec. Okay, so we put both the wires back in the base station. The light's gone green again because it is only 500 ohms. And we'll go back to our robot. And at 500 ohms, sometimes it'll work okay. Sometimes it won't. It really comes down to the size of your installation at this point. So now if I press the start button to clear the error, Okay. Start button to clear the error and then home and OK. It should follow the wire, maybe OK, it might be a bit wonky. Let's see how it goes. Not too bad, that's actually following pretty pretty good indeed, OK? Now what I'll do is I'll turn the robot to the middle of the lawn here. Now do remember this is only a very small lawn, we're only talking six metres from one side of the to the other. So now if I press start and OK. Let's just see if it actually crosses the entire wire or whether it stops halfway. It's probably okay. We'll see what happens. No, no, it's only getting about two meters away from the boundary wire before it turns back. So it's still not happy to actually go out into the middle of the, middle of the lawn because the wire signal is just a little bit too uh, too high in resistance. Okay, so let's go back to our resistor here, and I'll turn it back to about a quarter this time. Uh, it's probably only about 250 ohms, something like that. Let's go there. I won't measure it this time, but I'll measure it afterwards. So if we, um, I'm pretty sure that that'll be sitting at somewhere around about 250 ohms. And again, I'll point it across the biggest part of the lawn so it gets the furthest away from the wire. Press start, OK. And we'll see how we go at 250 ohms resistance in the boundary wire. Now it's about three meters away from the boundary, two, two or three meters away from the boundary wire, four, five, it's pretty much in the middle now, so it looks like it's going to be okay. So in this particular lawn, because it is so small, um, around 250 ohms, the robot will still work, okay? But if your lawn is much larger than that and you've got a much longer wire, if your wire is 200 meters long or 150 meters long, um, and the wires are you know, 20 meters apart from one wire to the other, then you'll find that yeah, it might be something like maybe 40 or 50 ohms is as much as you'll ever get away with. <laughs> now, on that note, 
a boundary wire that doesn't have any any issues with it whatsoever, hasn't got any bad joints or resistance anywhere, should be no greater than one ohm per 100 meters. So if you've got a 100 meter uh, length of wire in your boundary, and you put a multimeter on that wire, and it measures any more than one or two ohms, then there's very much likely going to be something somewhere in your in your boundary wire that's actually at fault. There's, there's an error somewhere, there's a bad resistance in a joint somewhere, okay? Typically, you know, I see 300 meter um, length of wire generally measure around about sort of four or five ohms, typically half the time, um, which robots don't have a problem with. As soon as your resistance goes greater than 10 to 15 ohms, more, uh, 10 to 15 ohms, then I really do think it's worth investigating and trying to find out what the issue is. Your robot still might be working okay at that point, um, but realistically, um, any more than 10 ohms, and there is something wrong with your wire, um, and it's not working, it really isn't, isn't correct, it's not how it should be, okay? So one of the other things that we really get a lot of questions on is that red light on the base station, um, and people sort of say, they, okay, the light is solid green, so therefore my boundary wire is okay. That light will not turn to red until the resistance of the wire is about 20,000 ohms. It's in, the, in that ballpark. They're all a little bit different, but around 20,000 ohms is where the light turns from green to red. So by the time you get to the point where you've got a red light or even just a slightly flickering red light, then your resistance is way higher than it should be um, and there's definitely something wrong with the boundary wire. So just be very aware that just because there's a green light on the base station does not mean that the, the, uh, the wire is okay. In fact, it really is quite, mis quite misleading to tell you the truth. Um, that you know, when your resistance to your wire shouldn't be more than 10 ohms, um, but the base station allows it to get to 20,000 ohms before the light goes red, um, I sort of wish it was a little bit different. I think they should have that light going red at around about 50 to 60 ohms. That should be about where it, where it, where it turns red. Okay, so the very next thing that I, want to, uh, that I want to just cover off very quickly is that even if your resistance to your wire is okay, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no damage to the wire because a wire can be damaged and sit in the ground but not be broken. Um, so if your wire, if the insulation of the wire is damaged and going into the ground, that can cause all sorts of issues as well. Um, particularly issues with, um, you know, there's quite a few customers that can report you know, a robot, and I'll just carry this one over to the edge here. Quite a few customers can report that when the robot approaches the boundary wire, it slows down, goes over the boundary wire, and then continues on and just bumps into the shed or the wall. N normally it's something metal um, beside the base of the wire. So that can be typical. When it does this, I'll just, uh, just so you know, and when it does this, it'll actually reverse back, and it'll just hit again. It'll reverse back, it'll hit again, it'll reverse back and hit again. It'll just keep doing it. It could do it up to 50 or 60 times, and it most likely will not free itself. What's generally happening in, this, in that scenario is that there's damage in your wire, possibly over here, and damage in your wire, possibly over there. Um, and the, 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 the signal of the wire is actually going into the ground and then going back up through your fence. Um, so the robot actually thinks that your fence is another boundary wire. Um, and it's trying to fight between the two boundary wires that it thinks is there. So I don't want to get too deep into that. So if you, if you do have those kinds of issues, then please contact us and we can, uh, we can help you out. I just wanted to sort of just touch on it just, to, uh, just to make sure that people are aware that even in faults like that where the robot's crossing the boundary wire and bumping into fences, the issue is typically the boundary wire, not the robot. So yeah, let's, let's, we'll leave it at that. Um, if you have any questions, please send us an email at sales at robotlawmowers.com.au. Um, you can find or message us on our website at www.robertlawmowers.com.au uh, and you can message us on Facebook, just search for Robert Lawmowers Australia. Thanks for watching.